I'm joined by Nikolai Nikiforov, Russia's Minister of Communications, at a time when the future of the Internet as a global communication medium is very much up for debate. A recent uh, meeting in Dubai about this very subject ended with much division over the topic of how much to divide up the Internet uh, with more national control. Mr. Nikiforov, thank you very much for joining. Thank you. So we'll start on that actual theme, that, uh, that summit in Dubai, which um, had a lot of division in it, many people say, uh, was a failure. When we look at that, if we look at the, the split between the participants, would you say perhaps with the EU and the US refusing, some EU, EU states refusing to sign, and on the other side Russia and China and some other states happily signing that, uh, that agreement, is it, could it be called an internet cold war starting? Definitely not, and I could hardly agree that it was a kind of a failure because we have uh, like 89 countries already who openly showed their uh, attitude and uh, openly agreed to sign the, the new document. Uh, even though they, they, they are just uh, 89 countries, many remaining countries, they are still in the process of signing. Okay, let's just zoom in on, on, uh, on Russia itself uh, for a second. Um, Russia was one of those um, pushing at this summit for more uh, regulation of, of what was, was called a national segment of the Internet. First of all, could you just help me? I, th I find that an odd concept, a, the, a national segment of the Internet. How do you define a national segment in something that everyone really thinks of as, as without boundaries, as a, as a global phenomenon? You know, my personal attitude to, to what happened in Dubai and to exactly to, to the coverage in mass media it seems to me that mass media definitely overreacted on what uh, was actually written in the documents. Uh, I'm afraid that many people writing all those articles and, and uh, uh, discussing all their views and state, making statements on, on the topic actually didn't look in the documents and in the concrete phrases, concrete uh, statements uh, written in the documents. They, they are very they are definitely very neutral. They, they, are, they are not about some kind of a strict control. Okay, on, on that point, I mean, I've got a bit of it here. Member states shall have the sovereign right to establish, implement public policy, including international policy, on matters of internet governance, and, and so on and so on. If it's so neutral, mm -hmm. there's no point in writing it in the first place. Russia obviously has um, a keen focus on more national control of, of this national segment of the internet. But the Russian government already has good controls o over the internet. Why would it need more? What, what for? Because before that, internet was not even mentioned there. Uh, we have to agree that internet today is, 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 is the fantastic tool of communication which unites millions and even probably billions of people already on the planet. And it has to be mentioned. We, we, we are for this, for the, uh, uh, for the security in a very positive uh, sense of it. And uh, many states have agreed that the Internet has to be mentioned in these in this ITRs. And uh, I could hardly find any, uh, any negative context of this, of this particular phrase. Why, for example, did the US and some EU states, among others, not like this idea, do you think? Well, I think we have to divide uh, political and economic issues here. Because... Uh, Internet is a, is a kind of a global economic model for certain companies. Most of them uh, are allocated and historically based in U.S. Definitely, ICANN is, is not for profit, but we have uh, kind of a uh, tier one operators. We have such big market players as Google, as Facebook, and many many others that are probably concerned about the, some 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 potential change in the business model. And I believe that this this uh, mass media. Uh, reaction was mostly based on, on, the, on, the, on the push from those global corporations to, to uh, avoid any, any possible economic model change. I think it, that was the kind of a major factor. For their part, um, I, Google's the example, but there's, there's Facebook, there's, there's many others. Um, they, are, they seem to be terrified of, of extra, these extra regulations. They say this is a very bad thing, it's going to increase censorship, the regulation is totally unnecessary. If these proposals, you say, that they're, they're nothing revolutionary, they're just standardizing all practice, why, why are you terrifying all of these internet companies so much? 
Well, once again, you should definitely ask those companies on their, to, to, to clarify their position. There's nothing about censorship in those documents. Yes, definitely, probably those global internet leaders which, which are making billions out of the internet economy, they would prefer that uh, internet is just not mentioned at all. And it, the, the, some kind of this uh, uh, uncontrolled uh, development and uh, information exchange could, 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 could still be growing. And, but, but, but many governments, they, they, they are concerned and have, they, they, they have to um, finally, to finally agree with that, they have they have to discuss it. And ITU is just one of the platforms for this discussion. Unfortunately, ICANN could could be hardly uh, positioned as the as the platform for the discussion of those issues, out of the technical technical ones. Russia now has new laws where the authorities can shut down entire internet resources without even having to go to court. How much power is too much? Uh, I think that that you uh, mean the uh, federal Russian law concerning uh, the, uh, the idea of blocking the resources containing child pornography, uh, drugs, uh, promotion, and uh, pr promoting of certain ways of, of, of uh, yeah, making a suicide, which our legislation concerned being harmful for our child uh, audience of the, of the Internet, which is, which is rapidly growing in Russia. Yes, we believe that these three types of information, they, they are not acceptable for uh, However, as young, you, young users, and that is why uh, we have a right, if the, 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 the hosting company, the content provider, does not uh, 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 block this information on their own in, this, in a certain time frame, we have a right to, to block access to, this, uh, to these resources. However, as your opponents point out, you already had the ability to do that before by going to the courts and getting a court order to stop it. Why do you need to bypass the courts altogether? Because this information is really harmful. Every day, every week or every month of, of those uh, court procedures, they, they could be really uh, harmful for this especially young audience of the, of the Internet. And uh, the decision is, is taken by certain government officials that take full responsibility of their decisions as well. And th this, the procedure is very, very uh, balanced as well. Yes, we do have certain uh, we had like maybe five times there were some serious issues about blocking this or that particular website. But, 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 but today we have only a only few hundred resource, uh, res uh, internet resources blocked. And, well, I, I've been looking through this list. Uh, please believe me, you could hardly find any, any person in, in Russia or any other countries globally that want their children to, to see those, those resources. I don't, I, I, we don't have any idea of censorship, and censorship uh, from, from uh, any government authorities is, is totally impossible in, in, in the, uh, this legal environment that today exists in Russia. When will you publish the list of, of the blacklisted sites? Well, today, today it's, it's not uh, required to publish this list, and I don't think it's a good idea because it's a kind of a promotion of all those uh, harmful information at one at one place. It's 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 not a secret list because all telecom operators in Russia they receive it daily to block it. So it's not kind of a government secret document. But still, I don't see any 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 good any good, I don't think it's a good idea just to promote it uh, this list by publishing it on some website. What about the WikiLeaks of this world? What about the anonymouses of this world? They're not making billions from the internet. However, they have p proved that they're perfectly capable of causing chaos and severely embarrassing governments. They don't seem to care which governments they hurt. It's fight the power for them. It's, you know, they, they don't have any sort of people that they protect or that they, they hold back from. What do you feel about them? Are they the enemy? Are they, are they dangerous? I think that every government is, con is concerned about uh, leaking of some information, especially uh, the information that could be concerned the secret one. But it's not about internet at all. It's still about uh, government uh, uh, information security and the, and the stability of those systems that are working. I mean, for, for, for these groups, I mean, I think many people would agree, they couldn't exist if it weren't for the internet. And for their part, they say, they are on a crusade to protect the people against governments that only want to try and hide their own misdeeds and corruption. And so, as far as these groups are concerned, um, would you not say that uh, 
that they have the, the, the voice of the people behind them. Um, do they need to be shut down? Does, does the damage that they could do outweigh the good that they could do? Well, there are several areas of the, of the openness uh, of the government information. For example, today, Russian Federation has definitely focused on the open government strategy. And it was initially introduced by President Medvedev, now the Prime Minister Medvedev. And we are trying to be as much open as possible. For example, if, if, we, if, we, if we speak about corruption issue, uh, Russia is one of the leaders, in, in global leaders, on the opening all the information concerning the, the, the government supply chains. We are very open in, the, in this kind of, kind of information. But if, was, if, if you ask me about my attitude to WikiLeaks uh, showing out some secret government documents, which could be harmful for the national security of this or that particular state, I don't know why, I don't know which state exactly, it's, it's definitely a serious issue. And I, I think that sometimes they could uh, uh, underestimate the, the, the potential uh, just harm to the national security systems and the, the, the government activities done by these uh, secret information leaks. Okay, from the individual's perspective, internet privacy. Millions of people every day give astonishing amounts of personal information to companies like Google, like Facebook. Do you think um, that from the citizen's own mistake, maybe, that they have destroyed the very concept of internet privacy, that now that's a nonsense term and it doesn't exist anymore? Unfortunately, it's, it's almost the way that you described. Uh, every internet user has to follow, I think, the very simple concept that internet never forgets. Any information that you once have uh, pushed into to this or that web-based system should be stored for some probably unlimited number of time. It could be somehow transferred, reused, and uh, nobody could, uh, could control it in, in, in any way. Definitely every serious um, uh, web service, every serious big platform for the communication has some user agreement which states the the, um, the, the, the privacy issues is one of the most important. But on the other hand, many people are concerned that, uh, for example, the information that, is, that flows through these uh, big web services is, uh, could, be, could be available to even, uh, if, 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 even those governments that, that uh, are hosting uh, those, those global corporations and primary uh, they, they think about the United States and many other countries, and uh, they are concerned that this information could be, could be also used for some other procedures. Uh, nobody has a clear answer about that, but everybody has to be concerned. And uh, information security issues, uh, and also the issues of using the legal content online, these are probably the most difficult legal issues that mankind, that mankind have, has ever faced. Uh, Mr. Nikiforov, thank you very much for Thank you so much.